Welcome to grade 11 chemistry with Tracy today. Guys, today we're going to be learning about the mole. So I hope you guys know the drill. Make sure you have your pens, your pads, you're making notes. And guys, if you're having any issues, if you're lost anywhere, make sure you hit up the Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And guys, you know the drill. Best question, there's a calculator up for grabs. But on top of that, I've also got this Casio label maker. Mm. Pretty handy. Pretty handy for those school books and generally anything you have in your room. So guys, make sure you get those questions in and we're going to see you after this break. Welcome back, my students. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Hope you guys have got your pads and your notes out. So guys, again, hit up the page. Make sure you write your questions up if you're lost anywhere so, we can, so I can pass them to Tracy so she can help you guys out. And for now, I want to send a quick shout out to Liberty for sponsoring, and I'm going to hand over to Tracy. Thanks, Ty. Okay, guys, grade 11s, I really like this section. We're going to do the mole, which I have my little mole in the side there, and I'm not referring to the creature that runs underneath the ground. But this, in terms of science, is an incredibly important concept for you to get. For your chemistry, you're going to do a lot of stuff with the mole. Okay? The mole sounds quite random, but it's not really. And I have to be honest, I don't actually know why they called it the mole, but they have. Okay? And the mole represents a specific number of particles. Now, to put this into terms you understand, if I had to say to you, that I'm going to go to the shops and I'm going to buy a dozen eggs. Okay, and then, I s and then I had to ask you, well, how many eggs would I then be buying? Most of you would be able to tell me, well, 12, because we all know that when I talk about a dozen, I mean 12. Okay, if we're watching cricket and we go, Graham Smith, our cricket captain of our five-day side, scores a century. Okay, we all know that that means he scored a hundred runs. If I say he scored a double century, that means he scored 200 runs. If we talk about him scoring half a century, then we mean 50 runs. We all know that a century means a hundred. Okay, if we talk about years and things we can talk about, decades, we all know that a decade would be 10 years. A specific value, so instead of going, well, he, were, he was born 20 years ago, I can say he was born two decades ago. Or we talk about music artists, we'll say, well, they were around four decades ago, or they've been around for five decades, or whatever the case may be. And we know that that means five times 10, or four times 10, or half a decade would be five years. So things like a dozen, a decade, um, a century, they all have specific values, but it's a term we've given to it. The mole is the same, but it's not an arbitrary term, okay? So it's not a case of, well, oh, in science, we need, a, we need a big value, so let's just stack one out of our thumbs. It's not that at all. It's very, very specific and can be determined experimentally, which luckily for you, we don't have to do. When I was studying, when I was doing, when I was at varsity, it was one of the practicals I had to do was I actually had to find the number of the mole. I had to work out this number through experiments, okay? So it's, pro it's something that you can prove. But why do we need the mole? So I'm gonna get to the number in a second. If we think very logically, if I'm looking at hydrogen and oxygen bonding together to form water, can I even vaguely begin to be able to see this, this reaction happen if I only take one hydrogen molecule with one hydrogen, well, I'd need two hydrogen molecules, sorry, with one oxygen molecule? There's not a chance we can see that. Even at CERN in Switzerland, they can't see anything that small. So we can't see it if it's just one of them. So we've got to put it in terms where if I take... 10 grams of hydrogen and 10 grams of oxygen, I can get so many grams of water at the end. I can deal with that, okay? We can see that. So when we look at chemical reactions, we need to do that. So we, we go back to what the mole is. And in fact, mole is a very special number called Avogadro's number, okay, which is 6,022 times 10 to the 23. And that is just for you to see. This was... Um, 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 Avogadro, I can't actually remember what his first name is. He does look a little mole-like, 
Okay, this is from the 1700s. He was an incredibly brilliant man, and he was actually the, the, the son of a lawyer. Um, he was Italian, but in honor of the work that he did, they, named, they gave this number his name. Okay, so it's Avogadro's number. You're going to see it often. The nice thing here is 6,02, you don't need the second, um, third decimal, will be on your information sheet, grade 11s, okay? So you don't need to remember it. But to give you an idea of how big this number is, if we had to take marshmallows and mm -hmm. cover the entire United States with a blanket of marshmallows, that blanket of marshmallows would be nine stories high. Okay, that's the entire United States, every single one of these states, just with little marshmallows. It's huge, okay? But remember that in one, two grams of hydrogen, that's how many hydrogen particles we have, okay? So we're talking about atoms which are tiny, 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 okay? Where does that get us to? Well, let's look at the definitions because you do need to know these, okay? Number one. A mole is the amount of substance that contains as many formula units, I'm going to discuss what we mean by those, as there are atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. This is the formal definition. Why carbon-12? Hopefully you remember in grade 10 you did relative formula mass, relative atomic mass, and we would have told you originally that that was compared to hydrogen because it's the smallest and the lightest of our elements. But then that definition changed to carbon because carbon is the most abundant and the most stable. Okay, so carbon is our specific one that we compare it to. We compare it to carbon-12 because remember carbon has isotopes. Okay, carbon-12 is its most stable isotope though. Avogadro's number which is Na, is 6,02 times 10 to 23 per mole. Now, that could be atoms, electrons, protons, people, heaven forbid, there's not even that many people on the planet, okay? It could be legs, arms, atoms, hair, whatever, okay? And one mole of a substance contains... 602, 602 times 10 to 23 elementary particles. Elementary particles, grade 11s, protons, electrons, neutrons, atoms, ions, or molecules. Those are what we consider elementary particles. Okay? So one mole of any of those has that many particles in, but one mole of anything has 6,02 times 10 to the 23 in it. Okay? And now we get to the crunch. Why is this number so important? Because one mole of an element has a mass equal to its atomic mass given on your periodic table. But it's atomic mass in grams. Now we get into the crux because in grade 10, we spoke about relative masses, okay, compared it to hydrogen. And probably for most of you, you were like, that's nice. Why? What's the point? Because when it comes to Avogadro's number, and this you're going to deal with next week, when it comes to looking at chemical equations for industry, it doesn't help us to have to sort of uh, suck them, you know, I'm trying to produce chlorine gas, but no, mm, I don't know how much sodium chloride you need to start with. We're going to look at a section where the next section of work is going to be, well, if I want to produce 100 grams of chlorine gas, how much sodium chloride must I start with in, used in normal, tangible, macroscopic values? Macroscopic being values that I can actually see, okay? So what does that get us to? It's, I'm hoping you can see this, but this is just to give you an idea. If I have one mole of carbon, there would be 12 grams of carbon, Okay? One mole of sulfur atoms is 32 grams of sulfur. Sulfur's bigger than carbon, it must be. One mole of mercury is 200 grams of mercury. It's a lot of mercury. One mole of iron would be 56 grams of iron. On your periodic table, carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, sulfur of 32, mercury is 200, iron is 56. You do not have to learn these values, grade 11s. You must be able to find them on your periodic table. So, 
What does that mean for us? The mass of a mole of atoms of an element is the element's relative atomic mass measured in grams, okay? Units, okay? Two things. Symbol. It's known as molar mass, capital M. Please, grade 11s, I'm asking you, I'm begging you that you look at your handwriting and if you've got to be able to tell the difference between your lowercase m and your capital M because it becomes important and its units are grams per mole, okay? In physics, mass is measured in kilograms. In chemistry, mass is measured in grams, just to confuse you. So what does that mean? When I write down, for example, the molar mass of sulfur, I just said in the picture, sulfur's mass was 32. I write it as 32 grams per mole. Oxygen, now be careful here, this is O2. That means there's two oxygen atoms in every molecule. One oxygen atom has a relative atomic mass of 16. So if there's two of them, then it's going to have a relative atomic mass of 32. Okay? Or molar mass. And then for water, this should look familiar to stuff you did last year. Water's H2O. Hydrogen's mass is 1. Oxygen's 16. And we would add them together. Okay? So we have done a lot of stuff. I'm just checking where we're going from here because I think I might be overloading. And, you know, we're going to take a little break mm -hmm. there. I think it's a good place to take a break, and then we'll Ready? come back and talk about atomic mass and stuff like okay. that afterwards. Cool. So, guys, you know the drill. Go grab yourself a snack. Go grab something to drink. But make sure you come back. That's the important part, making sure that they actually come <laughs> back for the rest <laughs> of the lesson. And, guys, make sure you have your pens and pads. You're making notes. And, guys, again, chat to me on the page so we can help you out. All right, see you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to grade 11 science. I hope you guys are ready for the rest of the session. It's pretty intensive, so you guys better be paying attention. And guys, remember, again, I have this to give away and this. So guys, get those questions in. You want this stuff. So Tracy, I think you can take it off from here. Brilliant. We're going to carry on with our information overload, grade 11s. I just did it to the grade 10s. Might as well do it to them. Okay, guys, this is just all the basic stuff that you really need to get a handle on. Let's talk about atomic mass, because we've sort of mentioned it. Remember, carbon-12 is our standard. We measure it. And it's the mass number on the periodic table, which shows the value. So that's really nice for us, because it's given to us, all right? Your relative atomic mass is AR. We don't use it that often in grade 11, but it is relative to carbon, okay? It's also the same value as the atomic mass, but... It has no units. Please be careful here in that if I had asked for the atomic mass of sodium, I would actually be asking for the molar mass of sodium. Then it needs units. Relative atomic mass, no units because it is a comparison. It is a ratio, okay, and it's compared to carbon-12. So definitions, okay? I know I'm overloading your brains, grade 11s. I'm sorry, and I'm repeating myself a little bit, but it's actually really important that you get this. Molar mass is the atomic mass, the molecular mass, the formula mass, any of those things that you've done, and they're all the same name, okay? It's the mass of one mole of a substance, units, grams per mole. Relative molar mass, okay, if this will come down, is just like I said with atomic mass, it is relative, there are no units. It's the same value as my molar mass, just without units, okay? It's relative, it's a comparison. Then, let's, uh, uh, okay, where did we go? Okay, the relative atomic mass in grams of any element will contain one mole, okay? So one mole of carbon, which is 12 grams of carbon has 6,02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. I said this earlier as well. One mole of any substance contains 6,02 times 10 to the 23 particles, which are atoms, molecules, ions, protons, electrons, etc. Okay. 
one mole of an element has a mass equal to its atomic mass in grams. I'm repeating myself here. Very important, the next one. One mole of a compound has a mass equal to the relative formula mass or relative to its molecular mass, grade 11s. So as a little bit of an example, here we have just an idea. If I have carbon and I have one mole of carbon, it's going to have a mass of 12 grams because I get that off the periodic table. It's made up of atoms. 6,02 times 10 to the 23. My, the one that isn't it is water. Now, water we worked out earlier, and water is H. Oh, okay, I don't think you can see that, so let's do There we go. Water is H2O, which is why its mass is 18 and not anything else. But now it's made up of molecules. Okay, so I'm talking about all of that as a whole. Sodium chloride, be careful here. Sodium chloride is NaCl. Okay. And we're talking about ions now because, remember, sodium chloride is an ionically bonded substance. So we have Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. Okay, wrong way. So that takes us to our equations. Grade 11s, please, this is where your handwriting plays such an important role. Number of moles, N, of a mass given mass of the sample, little m, lowercase m, divided by molar mass, which is capital M. Please be very careful here. The instructions we get when we mark, if this is not 100% correct, you don't get any marks, grade 11. Stupid reason to lose marks, okay, because you can't write neatly. Be very, very careful. And I know for a lot of you, you like to write in block letters. I have kids who are the same, who write everything in capital block letters. That becomes a problem because this, this M, this M must be a little M, and it must look like a little M, okay? And then we have number of moles is equal to the number of particles we have divided by Avogadro's number. So that's a way for us to know that if I know how many moles I've got, I can actually work out the number of particles. And from there, I'm actually ready to start my examples. Do you have any questions that right have come now? out? Yes, we actually yes. have one from Jacqueline. She wanted to find out how do you calculate the number of ions in two grams of K2SO4? Wow, she's going to jump right, right in there. In there, there. Like, we go. Okay. No little just right no, no, in we're going to stick right <laughs> in there. We we're going to get there anyway, but it's all right. So let's, good question. Um, let's just go to a blank page. Um, okay, so she, Jacqueline wanted to know how many ions. Okay, so we're looking for ions. In two in grams. Two grams of? K2SO4. All righty. And I've just realized I don't have my calculator. No, let me just get the calculator quickly because I'm going to need that. <laughs> and my periodic table. Whoop, ooh, okay, I don't have a periodic table. Give me a s g talk to the talk them and get yeah. a periodic table quickly. So guys, while oh, Tracy sorry. handles that, guys, make sure, as I keep telling you guys, if you have any questions, if you're lost anywhere, if you need help with anything, Hit us up on the page, then I hand them off to the teacher who will help you guys out. So, and my, I'm always telling you guys this, I can't help you if you don't help yourselves by putting those questions up. And I've got this awesome stuff to give away. Mm. So, Tracy, we're good to go? Oh, we're good to go. Okay. Right. Guys, this is always a good hint. I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. You <laughs> need to have one of these. Your periodic table, I tell my learners all the time. Always handy. Your best friend. Mm. One friend who will never leave you and never let you down. Mm. Anyway, now that was scary, so let's <laughs> move on. Okay, we want to know number of ions. In order to work out the number of ions, Jacqueline, we actually need to work out the number of moles first because then I can go back to that e second equation I just showed you. So if we look at the equation, it says number of moles is little m, mass given, divided by molar mass. Now, you're only given one piece of information per se, which is the two grams, so I know that that's... 2, which means I need to work out the molar mass, which is why I need the periodic table, because unfortunately I don't know all the masses. So the molar mass of potassium sulfate is, and I look at my periodic table, potassium has a mass of 39, but there's 2. Okay, and I'm going to run out of space because I wrote too big. Sulfur's molar mass is 32. And oxygen is 16, and there's four of them. 
Okay, so we're going right back to stuff you did in grade 10, and I really can't do this in my head, so we're just going to quickly work it out. And we're going to add the 32, uh, 116, and this is 174 grams per mole. It's quite big, okay? So now I'm going to go 2 divided by 174. So we do that, and we get 0 0,011 moles. But that actually wasn't the question. Did the, the, the question say number of ions? Yes. Okay, now, ja uh, Jacqueline, this is where life gets interesting. We really did jump in here head first, end. okay? <laughs> if I, let's just go one step at a time. Let's take this and break it down and go, well, let's rather work out the number of molecules we have. Okay, that's the easiest way first. We know how many moles I've got. So if I change this and go, well, let's work out number of molecules. Now, number of moles is equal to my number of particles. So in this case, I'm going to use number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number. Okay, so that means I'm going to go 0, 0, 1, 1. And I'm just going to make that a little bit easier. Unfortunately, there's no symbol for number of molecules. Wouldn't that be nice? And this is going to be 6,02 times 10 to the 23. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to take the 6,02 times 10 to the 23. And I'm going to times it by 0 0.11. And the number of molecules becomes quite a large number, it's 6,622 times 10 to the 21, okay? So that would mean if I'm looking at the potassium sulfate as a whole, that's how many molecules I have, all right? But they said to you number of ions, so they were, they were actually really mean because what you need to remember here, Jacqueline, is that potassium sulfate is actually broken up into only two ions because what it's made up of is K plus ions and SO4 to minus ions, okay? But, but, there are two K plus ions and one SO4 to minus ion in every molecule, okay? So, what we need to now remember is if I say to you we had a dozen people, you would know that that means we have 12 people. If I then say to you, okay, we have a dozen people, how many legs are there in those dozen people? You'd go, well, we have 12 people. Each person has two legs. So we would go 2 times 12 is 24. This is the same thing, okay? This is just a three-legged molecule. We have 6, 6, 2, 2 times 10 to the 20 molecules. Each of those molecules has three ions in it. Oh, and the two went seriously for a holiday. So... If we now look at the number of ions, it's 3 times 6,622 times 10, ooh, 10 to the 21. And I'm going to do it on the calculator, which gives me ish. All right. That really was jumping into the deep end straight away. 1 comma 9, 9 times 10 to the 22 ions. That's a lot. Okay, so you just have to break it down, but all the steps are the same because it's the same for all of these. So the first thing we needed to do is we work out molar mass, we work out number of moles. From there, we work out the number of molecules that we had, and then we can break it down into whatever they want because they could have also said how many potassium ions, how many sulfate ions, how many sulfur atoms. Anything to that effect. All right. Okay. Because I think literally that jumping in the deep end helped everybody. Brilliant. Because <laughs> 10 questions, that was Brilliant. the same thing. I love it. What's the next one? All right. Um, let me see. Let me see. I've got a couple here. So yes. I'm just trying to figure out which one's the best one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they're all brilliant. Yes, they are. Um, I've got another one from Tsifiwa. Hmm. I'm sorry if I got it wrong. I'm sorry. How do you calculate the number of... Potassium atoms in 43 grams of KMNO4. Wow, your teachers are mean, guys. The heck to Wow. Guy. Nothing like, all right. So we have how many grams? We have 43 grams. 
43 grams of KMnO4. Yes. And I need to work out how many? How many mm. atoms? Atoms in total of all of it? Yes. Wow. Pota no, potassium atoms. How sorry. many potassium atoms? Yes. Okay, that's cool. Yes. All right. That's, this is actually a little easier than the first question, but that's cool. I'm <laughs> quite happy with that. We're going we're gonna to follow the same steps, okay, guys? It's the same thing. So the first thing we're going to need to do is work out the molar mass. So I'm going to work out the molar mass of KMNO4. And I remember from the last one, potassium is 39. And manganese MN, which is further down on the periodic table, is 55. Wow. We got a ghostwriter today, apparently. <laughs> and <laughs> oxygen is 16. And guys, I really hope this makes you feel better that even your teachers still need to use their calculators. We can't do this in our head. Okay. So please don't try and do it in your head because when you're under pressure, you tend to make mistakes. And that's just a silly way to lose marks. Right. So we've got the molar mass, step one. Mm -hmm. Step two, we're now going to work out how many molecules we have. So let's work out number of moles. Molar mass over M. So it's going to be 43 divided by 158. And 43, 158. And we, ooh, we get 0.27 moles. But they wanted molecules. They wanted the actual number. So that means I've first got to work out how many molecules we have. So let's do it. We did it with the last one. Number of moles is equal to number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number. So we had 0.27. Like I said, there's no shortcut to this. I'm sorry, grade 11s. Okay, so we're going to go 0.27 times 6 or 2 exponent 23 and so my number of molecules let's round it off. Alright, but the question was how many K atoms, potassium atoms we have. Now this is actually a really nice one because if we look at this and we go, well, in one molecule, so I've got K mno 4 that's one molecule, we only have one potassium atom. So this is actually really nice because it means we don't have to do anything with this. So when I look at my number of potassium atoms, it's going to be exactly the same as the number of molecules I have. So in other words, it's 6, 1,63 times 10 to the 23. I don't have to multiply it by anything because it's the same as saying, well, there's only one head on my body. So, or if I had a dozen people and I wanted to know how many heads we had, we'd have a dozen heads, okay? Unless we have some two-headed people, which would be a little scary. Okay, so it's one-headed people. Okay, so we only have one, 1, 1,63 times 10 to 23. Mm. And it's a good place to take a break. Yes, I think after that, even my head's starting to get a bit <laughs> warm under all these dreadlocks. Brilliant. <laughs> all but these guys, numbers. you know the drill. Go grab some drink. Make sure you're energized, revitalized, and we'll be back after this break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you guys had a nice little break and you're ready to go. I know this is pretty intensive, but I hope you're paying attention. And Tracy's going to be helping you out. And guys, again, keep sending your questions to the page so I can relay them straight to Tracy and we'll help you. So I'm going to hand back to Tracy and you do your thing. Brilliant. Thank you, Ty. No well, we thought we'd take a couple of steps back because you guys really did dump in the deep end. And look at the ones where... You give a number of moles, rather, and now you have to calculate the mass of the substance because that's also the way around that we can do it. So what we have here is I've got two questions which you can look at. First one is calculate the mass of half a mole of sodium chloride. Now, this is when you realize I'm a little more um, organized than I looked earlier. Okay, so we want to look at the number of mass. We want to look at the mass of that number of moles. So remember... We're not changing anything. Let's just write down what we were given. We're looking at the first one. My number of moles is 0.5. And we want little m. 
So I'm definitely going to need to know what the molar mass of, so of ammonium chloride is. So let's work that out. Grade 11s, please pay attention to the way I'm actually setting this out because remember, in any test or an exam, you're going to actually be asked to work out molar mass of quite a few things. And you're going to have number of moles, and we're going to get into mole calculations next week. And it's really important that you remember which ones you're working with and that your teacher knows which ones you're working with. So nitrogen has a mass of 14, hydrogen is 1, and chlorine is 35 and a half, and we add all those together and we get 53 and a half grams per mole. Now, I don't want that, I want little m. So if we go here, we say, well, lit number of moles is mass given over molar mass. My number of moles is 0.5. My mass, molar mass is 53,5 grams per mole. So I would now multiply both sides together because I want to get little m on its own. And we get 26,75 grams, okay? Half of it. Not so bad, all right? Now, 0.2 moles of sulfuric acid type of thing we're going to get. You're going to get into calculations where you're going to have to look at concentration. So mass is going to become important. You're going to look at lots of acids and basis calculations. So 0.2 moles of H2SO4. Okay. I'm going to need to work out the molar mass of sulfuric acid. So M, which is H2SO4. By now, we're starting to go, no, we're getting there into this. Hydrogen is, has a mass of 1. Sulfur has a mass of 32. Oxygen's mass is 16. And unfortunately, I've been teaching so long, I do know those ones off my head. And that gives me 98 grams per mole. But that wasn't the question. The question was, what mass does it have? So into my equation, where n equals... M over M, it gets very confusing because they all sound like the same letters in the alphabet. We've got 0, comma, 0, 2. We want little M. Big M is 98. So mass is now going to be 0, comma, 0, 2 times 98. And we get 1,96 grams. Now, these values are all fine, grade 11s. These are, these are macroscopic values. These are values we can see. These are masses we can actually measure. Makes our life so much easier in terms of actual chemical reactions. Okay, so Ty, yes. hit me with the next question. Hmm, there's so many to pick so from. <laughs> it's a so difficult many, section. Which is so good. Thanks, guys, for actually posting up your questions. Yes, I've got one from Brilliant. Yes. She says, how many atoms are there in 24.02 of, cab of carbon? Cabin. Cabin? Carbon. C carbon? Yes. We live in South Africa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what mass is it? It's how many grams? 24.02 grams. Very specific. Okay. And they want to know how many atoms there are if we have carbon. carbon. Yes. This is actually a really nice one. Okay, because we're going to go we're going to go back to where we said carbon's molar mass is 12, so this one makes it easier. So we're first going to work out number of moles. So we have 24,02 divided by 12. Now, what might have um, actually happened when this question was set is they used the the molar mass from the new periodic table, which the grade 10s have to use, and that would be 12,01. Mm. But grade 11s, your periodic table still has whole numbers. It doesn't actually make a difference. Um, so we're going to divide by 12, and we get 2,001 moles, but they wanted number of atoms. So when we take this, we're going to go, well, number of, I'm just going to manipulate the equation straight away. Um, number of atoms is actually going to be molem, your number of moles times Avogadro's number. Okay, we're going to make life a little bit easier here. So that's 2,001 times 602 times 10 to the 23. So let's work that out. And... 
1 comma 2 0 times 10 to the 24. Okay, carbon mm. atoms, we're all happy. That's a big number. It's a very big number. Yes, we actually have one from Mohale. Yes. He wanted to find out how do I work out problems where I'm given the formula of any substance mm -hmm. and I'm asked to give it in percentages. Okay, we, that's percentage composition. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to deal with that next week. So right. we're not, it's a great question. Um, that's percentage composition. You are going to need to have to do molar mass, but mm. we're going to actually deal with percentage composition. Because you don't want to jump the gun too far. Yeah, let's not jump too far ahead, but it's okay. actually a good question, so hold it for next week. Okay, yeah. then another one from Tato. He says, if O2 moles of KBr, how do we calculate the number of moles which K ion and Br ion occupy? Hang on. It's complicated how that's... I, 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 you might need to say that again for me. Okay. Yes. Let's break it down. Okay. So if O2 moles. O2 moles. Is in 0 0.2. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so 0 sorry. 0.2. Okay, there we go. 0 0.2. Okay. Moles. Thanks. Okay. All right. We're speaking the same language. Yes. Of KBR. Of KBR, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how do we calculate the number of moles which K ion and the BR ion occupy? Okay, in other words, how many they are? It's actually mm. given to you. It's actually mm. a nice question. It is. No, no, it's fine. Because. KBr, we have 0, 0,2 moles of KBr. KBr breaks down into one potassium ion and one bromine ion, which means, in fact, it's the same as like when I was saying with the people with the legs, okay? If I have a dozen people and I say, well, how many legs are there? You'd go two times that 12, okay? So each of these is like a leg. Okay, so K plus is your left leg and BR minus is the right leg and it's the other way around. I'm pointing to the wrong ones. Okay, it doesn't matter. So I would have 12 left legs and 12 right legs. Doesn't matter, okay? So the point here is because I know I've got 0, 0,2 moles of KBR, that means I'm going to have 0, 0,2, ooh, write it properly, 0, 0,2 moles of potassium plus ions and I'm going to have 0, 0,2 moles, you don't need the... E of BR minus ions. Okay, so it's given to you. What your teacher was looking for here is whether you understand that KBR is made up of one potassium ion and one bromine ion. So if I have 0.2 moles in total, I actually have 0.2 moles of potassium ions, 0.2 moles of bromine ions, which means in terms of ions, I actually have 0.4 moles of ions as a whole when we add them together. All right. Yeah. Then we have another one from Georgina. Yes. She said a lead sinker has five, gr is five grams, right? Yes. And then how many lead atoms are in the sinker? Wow. Okay, so we have five grams of lead. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they want to know how many atoms. It's all, oh, that is a question mark. My learners are going, that's the teacher we know oh. and love. Yes. <laughs> yes, the handwriting that's illegible. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we've done with all of them. The nice thing here is we don't need to work out a molar mass because it's actually on your periodic table as 207. So let's work out the number of moles of lead we have, which is quite a ridiculously small number because it's 5 divided by 207. So let's work that out. And we get... Well, it's not that bad. It's not common, not two, four moles. But they were looking for number of atoms. So just like we did earlier, number of atoms ooh, is equal to number of moles times Avogadro's number. Okay. And so I'm going to go 0, 0,024 times 6,02, put it in the calculator correct. It's 0.23. So there's still a ridiculous amount. 1,44 times 10 to the 22. It's huge. It is rather. It's 144 with 20 noughts behind it. Mm -hmm. No, that's it's ridiculous. That goes on, that's a number that goes on forever. Yes, I don't even know if ever. it's got a name. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Next one. Let me see. Hmm. I'm still looking. I'm still looking. I think for now, I think we could go with a couple more of your examples. Can we go back to the question we did on? Uh, we saw that question earlier about whether mass and moles were the same thing. 
Remember. Yes, let me try and find that one. Okay, well, mm. sort of remember it. Um, someone on Facebook, we, find, mm. we, we were discussing it earlier, posted the question of mole, that number of moles and mass are the same thing. They're not the same thing. You guys have got to yes. get this. A mole is a number of particles, okay, which is just, a, and it could be measured in atoms, it could be molecules, it could be ions, that's what its unit would be, okay, and a mole of anything is 6,02 times 10 to the 23. Mass is measured in grams, okay, mass is measured in grams, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a measure of matter, Okay, so you've got to make sure they're not the same thing. And that is a good place to take a break, I think. Yes, I agree. Yep. I agree. So, guys, you know the drill. Make sure you come back. And, guys, make sure you have your notes and pads and stuff and you're making notes because this stuff is very, very important. And, guys, make sure, make sure you hit us up on the Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to Grade 11 Chemistry with Tracy here. Guys, make sure, as I said, keep posting those questions. One, one of these, don't you? You do, you do. So, actually, Tracy, before we go on, I actually have yes. a question here from Balesa. Brilliant. She wants to know, why do we multiply by three every time we're looking for ions? Ah, bringing up a little bit of misconception there. Yes. Good question, though. Palesa, we don't multiply by three. I think you got a little confused when we looked at the question with the K2SO4. In that instance, there was two ions. But if you look at the question we just did, so if we go back to the one I did now, the number of ions, not that one, um, two ago, the one we did two, if I was looking at number of moles for, for the KBR, I would multiply by two because there's only two ions in it. Okay, so the number we multiply by will, is determined by how many ions are actually in the substance. So with something like the potassium sulfate that we did earlier, then that was because there were two potassium ions, one sulfate ion, so there's three in total. Okay, so we're not always going to multiply by three. That is going to change. It depends on the question. Now, I've got one last question lined up just to, I think, hopefully wrap all of this up. And what we have here is a nice simple question, this type of question I really hope you guys get in your exams, which says, what is the mass of 0.1 moles of hydrogen gas? Now, I chose this specifically because you, we've just finished doing gases and gas laws. So here they, they, they haven't told you what the formula is. In all the other questions so far, we've been given the formula, so that's made life easier, okay? But they've said hydrogen gas. What is the hint here? It, ooh. Besides the fact that I need to learn to write, they're telling you that it's H2. Okay, be careful there, grade 11s. So if we want the mass, remember the molar mass of hydrogen gas is going to be 2 grams per mole. So the first thing we want is the mass. And we have 0 0.1 moles. So my mass here is no, sorry my yeah my mass is 0 0.2 grams. Please, 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 please be careful here, grade 11. Now they ask you how many molecules does this mass of hydrogen gas contain? Well, we're looking for number of molecules. That means number of moles times molar mass. They told you we didn't have to work it out. It was 0, 0, 0, 0,1. I'm actually not going to do the whole calculation. Okay, times average was numbers. I want to get something that's more important. And we will move on. In fact, you guys can work this out on your own. And we're going to get 6,02 times 10 to the 22. Where's the hint that there was something special about this question? How many atoms does this mass of hydrogen contain? It's hydrogen gas. That means in every one molecule, there's two hydrogen atoms, which means the number of H atoms is going to be twice the number of molecules. Okay. And let me just give you the answer. And... Hopefully, 
that has cleared it all up for you guys. And I think we're done. Is it? All yeah. right. Well, if Tracy says we're done, we're done. It's time to say goodbye. All right. So, guys, it was fun having you guys, grade 11s. Hey, you guys can stay tuned for the grade 12s. It's always just so you can know what's coming forward. So, guys, make sure, as I said, keep sending in those questions. The forum is for you guys to chat to each other. Make sure you guys keep chatting. And, guys, I hope this lesson was helpful. And I'm going to say a big thank you to Tracy. And Indy says hi. And hi to everyone at home. And, yes. So, guys, we'll see you next time. Peace.